In part one of my homemade MG34 build, I used Poplar to make the receiver, where bullets are fed into the left side of the gun and spent shell casings are expelled on the right. And yes, mine is made from wood. The receiver was the most complicated part that I've made so far, and I'm pretty happy with it. Today, I'd like to show you how I made the trigger assembly and pistol grip also from wood. Even in its own time, the MG34 was an expensive gun to manufacture because so much was made from machined blocks of solid steel. A one-to-one -one scale drawing will allow me to transfer the basic shape to a piece of poplar before I cut it out with my scroll saw. I didn't cut exactly on the outline because it's easier to remove material than to add it back. What followed was a lot of sanding to get these curves into just the right shape, and I used double-sided tape to attach a copy of the trigger assembly to the wood, which ensured proper spacing of the pistol grips. Four mounting holes were drilled before being countersunk to accept oval-headed slotted screws, and then of course more sanding, which leads to one of my favorite parts, staining and polyurethane. Oh, that looks nice. I applied several coats of satin polyurethane over the next day, and then the grips are ready to be test fitted on the handle. Lining them up now and pre-drilling the holes allows the screws to be tightened without splitting the wood. Wooden dowel rods are expensive, but foam brushes are not, and after a little bit of cutting, I've got the ingredients for both a safety and a selector switch. The two pieces fit snugly together, which is a good thing, and now I can attach some of the smaller details that I just made. Up close, this isn't going to fool anybody, but from 15 feet away or on camera, it should be pretty convincing. 
I've taken a few liberties with my interpretation of this gun, and I'm just trying to capture the feeling or impression of a German MG34. Like the receiver, this started off in flat black, which I wasn't too happy with. So after a little wet sanding, I resprayed it in a color called Oil Rubbed Bronze. Ooh, fancy. My next step was to coat everything in black acrylic craft paint, most of which was wiped off but some settled in the recessed areas. There was also a bit of wet sanding involved to further dull any remaining shine. And now I can add some silver highlights and nicks for that lived in look, or as the cool kids say nowadays, patina. A real MG34 would most likely have had pistol grips made of Bakelite, but I'm a sucker for the natural grains of stained wood sealed with polyurethane. I was even thinking, at one point, of staining this entire gun rather than painting over the natural wood. But I'm glad I painted it. I really like the more realistic look of a well-used, even beaten up, nearly 90-year-old war relic. When this whole thing is finished, it's going to be pretty heavy, especially after I install the barrel assembly. The pistol grip needs to be securely attached to the receiver. I'm drilling two holes that will accept wood screws and fender washers to pull the two parts together. A third screw towards the front into the bottom of the receiver should also help, but the main strength will come from the two screws inside. Here's the finished receiver and fire control group back together, along with a sneak peek at the barrel, which I'll show you how to make in the next video. So until then, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care.